Hello everyone and welcome back to physics class. Today we are going to be talking about the friction force. Now the force of friction is a force that opposes motion. This means that when we're looking at a diagram, friction is going to be the arrow that is always pointing in the opposite direction of the movement. In order for friction to occur, you need to have two surfaces or contact between two things. So let's take a look at our car example that we've been using. Now, when we have a car on the road, there is friction occurring between the tires and the road. If I were to say that the car was moving towards the right with our applied force, then we would say that friction is acting in the opposite direction right here. And it is going to be, in this case, since this car is moving, it would be kinetic friction. So we write it as Fk. Now I mentioned a specific kind of friction force here. This is kinetic friction. Kinetic friction occurs when there is movement or when there is motion present. There is another type of friction force that occurs without movement, and that is called static friction. And of course, static friction means that there is no motion. Static means not moving. So these are the two types of friction. Now, when it comes to the actual understanding of what causes friction. Friction actually depends on two things. It depends on the normal force and it depends on the roughness of the two surfaces. Let's take this example of the tire and the concrete or the asphalt, I should say. If we were to like zoom in to this here, woo, we would see that the tire has these grooves in it to help it grip the asphalt. And the asphalt is actually pretty rough as well. This forms a really good amount of friction, which is required for moving our car. We actually use friction to move our cars. So you, you do want to have like a good amount of friction between the tire and the actual road. So the roughness indicates how much friction there's going to be. If this was a smooth plane, like if this was ice, that means that your tires would skid and there wouldn't be any friction. That's why it's dangerous driving on icy roads because you don't have enough friction and therefore you can slide off the road. So we describe the roughness, the relationship of the roughness between these two surfaces as the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is a constant and it changes depending on which surfaces are in contact with which surface. Now, when we talk about the different forces and calculating their values, there's two formulas. There's one for static and one for kinetic. So for static friction, we have the formula Fs for static is less than or equal to the coefficient of friction of static friction times the normal force. The mu stands for the coefficient of friction. This is the constant that describes the roughness of the two surfaces. Fn is of course our normal force. Now, the reason why we have this symbol here instead of an equal sign is because when you have static friction, you can have a range of friction because this object is not moving. So you could have zero friction, you could have like one newton worth of friction, or you could have like 10 newtons of friction. It's a range. So that's why we have this inequality sign here. When it comes to kinetic friction, we have a straight up formula Fk is equal to the mu of Kfn. So in this case, K 
Kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So the formulas are very similar, just with slight differences in terms of the coefficients here. Now, let's take a look at an example to show you how to use both of these different formulas here. So let's say that we have our car example here. And the asphalt is wet here. So I'm going to make a little note that says it's wet. So it skids on this wet asphalt. We know that the mass of the car is 1,500 kilograms. And we are going to assume that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.5. We're just going to assume that. So how do we find our friction force being exerted on this car? Now remember, friction force is going to be in the opposite direction. We need to do a little bit of sleuthing to find this. So first things first, we need to take a look at our formula. We have our mu k, but we don't have our normal force. So we need to find our normal force. But if we remember to find our normal force, we need to have our gravitational force. So gravitational force, if we recall, is mass times gravity. So let's do that first. So 1,500 times negative 9.81, and that will give me a gravitational force of negative 1,4517 newtons. So 14,517 newtons. The normal force is going to be this, but opposite. It's, it's going to be positive. So the normal force is going to be positive 14,517 newtons. And now we can go ahead and find our kinetic friction force. So Fk is equal to mu k, which is 0 0.5, times the positive 14,517, which will give us an answer 7,258.5 newtons. So this is an example of kinetic friction. Let's take a look at an example of static friction. Static friction tends to be a little bit more confusing because of this whole inequality thing here. So let's go ahead and set that up. So in this example, we have a wooden statue here. Um, actually, let's make him have a pointy hat. There we go. We have a nice wooden statue right here. And we want to know what is the maximum force that can be applied to this statue that has a mass of 345 grams without making the statue move. So we wanna know how much force can we apply to the statue without it moving. So we're gonna assume that the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.5. So basically in this case, we are looking for the maximum amount of static friction force that we can get without the statue moving. So we're gonna be looking for our static friction force and as per usual, we need to take a look at our formula. We know that we need to find our normal force. Our normal force we know is the negative of our gravitational force. And we know that our gravitational force is mass times gravity. We need to make note though, that our mass in this case is currently in grams. We need to change this into kilograms. Our mass has to be in kilograms. So my first step will be to take my grams and divide that by a thousand to get 0 0.345 kilograms. Then from here, I can go ahead, find my gravitational force which in this case gives me negative 3.4 newtons. 
And since my normal force is the same thing, but opposite direction, my normal force is going to be positive 3.4 newtons. To find our static friction force, we use this formula here. And if you remember how to solve these kinds of problems, you basically treat this like an equal sign. So static friction force is equal to 0 0.5 times 3.4. And I end up getting a total of 1.7 newtons. And there is my answer. Now, just a reminder that if you had to isolate for one of these variables and you had to divide by a negative number, then this symbol does have to flip and turn to the other side, essentially. Um, so just make note of that. But in this case, it was a very straightforward calculation. It was just finding it out. Um, so we know that in this case, the static friction force has to be less than or equal to 1.7 for this statue to not move. Thank you for listening and I will see you all next time. Bye.